Hey there, I'm August Bryce, and I'm all about safer living in a wireless world. So today I wanna to show you something that's happening all over the world. And depending on where you live or how your home is laid out, the smart meter may be something you'll wanna get smart about. In Europe and in the US and likely worldwide, good old fashioned analog meters that electric, gas, and water companies use to charge you are getting switched out and they're getting replaced by smart meters. No more meter readers, kind of sad, huh? Instead, utility companies get real-time readings of what you're using. They can monitor peak hours, bill super specifically, etc. But that's just the beginning. This is two-way technology. So the meter sends information to the company and the company can send information to you or to your home. It can tell you stuff like you're using too much or using energy at less than a good time. Now the smart meter communicates via wireless. The frequency and energy levels from smart meters should be about the same as Wi-Fi, cell phones, cordless phones, a lot of the other wireless that you already have in your house. So watch now as we check this out. See, we're getting readings in microwatts per centimeter squared. That's the typical unit used in America. Two things I want to point out right here is one, it's not like the meter is constantly emitting this level of energy, it fluctuates. But this TES meter, this right here, gives us the measurement we can record and compare. The second thing is that it's measuring field intensity and it doesn't really tell us if or how the energy is affecting us biologically. If you want to know more about that, check out a link on my site called Polarization. So anyway, the highest level we measured, 5671. Now let's look at levels for my home Wi-Fi. Look, that's just about 25. Now both of those are pretty significant numbers, and I personally wouldn't want to be within 10 feet of that energy. But the idea with a smart meter is that it's generally in a pretty remote location. So their contribution to your home's overall radiation level is supposed to be minimal. But in tight housing, like here in these apartments, it's very likely the meters are right up next to important living spaces. And remember, they run at intervals 24 hours a day. And since no one can be absolutely sure how this energy affects our minds and our bodies, I think it's really important that beds and cribs or anywhere you spend a lot of time, you're far away from the smart meter. Same goes for Wi-Fi, because there's no question you're being exposed to non-ionizing radiation. Really, it's true. And the energy is strongest at the source and then dissipates as you get further away. You know, I think there's just way too much wireless RF energy blanketing our world as it is. So I was fortunate enough to live in a state that lets me opt out. Here it is. This is my non-wireless meter. And I want you to take a look at the readings. Look at this. They are practically non-existent, they're so low. Opting out cost me a one-time charge and then an extra monthly fee for a meter reading service. If it bugs you to write your utility and they may remove the smart meter and replace it with a non-wireless meter. So here's the smart meter and here's a non-wireless meter. You know, I really like the idea of not having a smart meter. And if you want to opt out but you can't, you may want to reach out to one of these anti-smart meter coalitions. Check it out on the internet. Either way, here's to staying safe in our wireless world. See you next time.